is the Lord somebody? Do you need healing in any part of your life? Do you need financial wisdom? Do you need God's hand to reach you at the point of your need? Yes, you're welcome to Rivers of Joy where all we do is touch lives and birth destinies. Do join us on any of our services online and be blessed. God bless you. I'll sing Hosanna to the God who never dies. The one who was and is to come. Jehovah, the mighty man of war, you are Jehovah, you are Jehovah. wonders. The world works its powers. The world perform miracles. The world perform healing. The world is powerful. The world is quick. The world is sharper than two-edged sword. The world pierces the bone and it pierces the marrow. The world touches our hearts. It melts our hearts. The world pricks. The world delivers, the world heals, the world promotes, the world lifts a man from the dungeon and sits at him among the princes. There's nothing like the world. There's nothing like the world. There's nothing like the word of God. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, we come this morning. We do not come in our own power. We do not come in our own strength. But we come under the auction of the Holy Ghost. Father, have your way this morning. Have your way this morning. Move like never before. Move in the same manner, oh Lord. Move as you have moved in the days of old and even in our time. Do something new for somebody this morning. And let your name alone be glorified. 
Let no man be praised here today. Let no minister, no pastor be praised here today. But let your name be glorified. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this great privilege. Thank you for your awesome wonder. Thank you for what you have done since the beginning of our gathering in this assembly. And thank you for what you will do now. Lord, we are trusting that souls will be delivered. We are trusting, Father, O oh Lord, that hearts will turn to you. We are also trusting, Father, O oh Lord, that those that have been under one form of challenge, under one form of siege, by the instrumentality of the world, they will be set free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we just jam our hands together? Let's just jam our hands together. As we are comfortably seated in his vineyard, let's just jam our hands together. Father, I thank you. I do not take this privilege for granted. And I thank our fathers and the faith in the house for this privilege that you have been giving unto me and unto us. It's an awesome privilege. We've been fed with milk. We've been fed with meat. And we've been fed with bones. So it's by no accident that we are now chewing bones. And that same privilege, that same grace that our fathers carry, we are also on that pedestal to also deliver on that platform. Father, have your way this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. So by the special grace of God, I'll be speaking on the word works. The world works. And everything that makes the world works sits on our feet. Everything that makes the world works sits on our belief. Everything that makes the world works rests on our feet. When Jesus was on earth, he did not say, according to my own feet. Jesus was saying, be it unto you according to your feet. Jesus did not put his own faith in you. He said, you have to build your faith. Fight the fight of faith. He said, be it unto you according to your faith. So everything that will make the word of God to work rests on our faith and it rests on our belief. But I'll tell you something along the line. It is not only our faith and it's not only our belief. As we journey through this sermon, we will see what you need to do that your faith can come alive. What you need to do that your faith will, will bet miracles. What you need to do that your faith will allow things to happen just as you say it. Praise the Lord. And one major example that God set for us was in the beginning. God was the one that started it. He started it in the beginning. The truth is God has been speaking, but we have not been listening. Just the way we will say in my own uh, Yoruba language, So God has been speaking. God has been doing wonders. But we have not aligned to what God has been doing. No wonder he said, I will open my mouth and I will speak parables. I will speak secrets that have been there from the foundation. So it's led for us to search and to understand the mysteries behind the world. Praise the Lord. So, the scripture says, Blessed is she that believeth, in Luke 1, 45. It says, For there shall be a performance of those things that have been told of her from the Lord. If you don't believe, there's no way you can see that performance. Just like it was said in the early service, it said everything has a process. Even your belief has a process. You must get to a level where you believe the word of God in totality. Praise the Lord. And with God, all things are possible. But with man, they are impossibility. He said, if thou can believe, can believe, he said, all things are possible. And God demonstrated in the beginning. And how did God demonstrate these things? He said in the beginning, let, and God said, let there be light. Genesis 1, 3. He said, let there be light. And there was light. God was speaking. The things that be not, he was calling them into existence. He said it more than ten times in Genesis chapter 1 alone. He said, and God said in 1.6, he said, let there be a firmament in the midst of waters and let it divide the waters. God was saying it. He also said in 1.9, he said, let 
the he said, let the waters, let them gather onto one place and let the dry land appear. That was God telling us what he needed to do. God was also saying, it. he said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life and fowl that may fly above the earth and in the open firmament of heaven. God also said, let the earth bring forth the living creature. I hope it's been displayed on the screen. Genesis 1 from 1 to 28. And, and in 1 to 28, in 1 28, God said, and God blessed them. The thing that amazed me most was when he said in, John 1, in Genesis 1 26, he said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. In 1 28, he said, and God blessed them. And he told them, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living creature that move upon the earth. And everything that God was saying, it was good. Everything he was saying was good. There was nothing that God said, no, ah, we, did, we made it halfway. Because as he said it, it came to existence. The scripture says, by merely speaking the word, the heavens were created and he breathed the world and all the stars were born. That was the breath of God. And no wonder, Jesus said, these things that God said in the beginning, it can also happen in our life. He was saying it. He said, was it not written in your law that ye are gods? He said, ye are gods. Was it not written in the law? That was Jesus saying it in John 10, 34. He also said it in John 10, 35. He said, if ye are gods, unto whom the scripture came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So it has been said. So it's just for us to align, to know that, okay, we are gods. And how did we become God? Because he said he made us in his own image and in his likeness. No wonder God also said, when he was speaking to them in uh, the gods in Psalm, uh, was it in Psalm 89, Psalm 82. He said, they know not, neither do they understand. They walk in darkness. All the foundations of the heart were out of course. He now said, but I have said, ye are gods and son of the most high. He said, but ye shall die like men and one of the princes. Because they did not know how to go about it. Because they were in darkness. Because they were not informed. They were ignorant of a lot of things. So the scripture said they will die like men. And that is why a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people still don't understand that the world works. A lot of people still don't understand that what you have to do is for the world to be formed in your heart and for you to start speaking it. It's for you to start speaking it. No wonder I fear God so much. When God was creating the world, he was just saying it. Eru olorun ba mi Eru olorun ba mi o Owo to ba ti pinu lokan re ko se da to le ta duro Eru olorun ba mi Eru olorun ba mi o you can also have it in this. What he say he will do. That is what he has done. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why God is called Jehovah. He said it and it happened. They will call him talking now do. As they see him now, so it they happen. Praise the Lord. God said it and it happened. He said, let there be. Let there be. And while I was preparing for this ministration, I was telling myself, what can I tell the people of God? And God said, go to the beginning. That was where God started speaking. That was where God started speaking. And it not, it not done on him. That God has been speaking a long time, but we have not been hearing. A lot of us have not been hearing. God has been speaking. We have not been hearing. 
said, go to the beginning and begin to look at what you can tell my people. And I went there. I started looking. Oh, and God said, and God said, and it was so. And God said, and I, and I said, how can I even understand that God said, in what capacity can I also be in that level where I will begin to speak? That was where he said, ye are gods and son of the most high. He said, but because you do not understand, because you do not know how to go about it, you were in darkness. Even the heart was in darkness. He said, but you will die like mere men. Like one of them that fell, like one of the princes that fell. He said, you will die like mere men. So what you don't understand, what you fail to understand, can work against you. Ignorance is a disease. What you don't know can be a limitation to your, to, your, to, to, your, to your next level. What you don't know can stop you from moving forward. Information is powerful. Information is key. Praise the Lord. And we'll be talking now, how can the word be delivered to you? Still from the beginning, how can the word be delivered to you? Of course, we now have an understanding. That the word started from God himself. He started speaking it. The scripture says in John 1.1, 1, 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. He said, as many that received him and believed him, to them he gave power to become sons and children of God. Even to them that believed in his name. John 1.12. Even to them that believed in his name. So that is why he said, believing is the first part. Your faith will come alive once you believe. Praise the Lord. And how was the word delivered to you? So a clear example is Joshua in the Bible. Joshua was a man that was filled with wisdom simply because his mentor laid hands on him. May God give us mentors. May God give us great leaders that will show us the way. If you are leveraging on the shoulders of your mentor, you have already run like 50 or 60 percent. It is popularly said that for you to connect to the present, you need just three or four people that will connect you to that person that you want. So if I want to connect to the president in this house, I know who to connect to. And that person that I will connect to will just take me to two or three people, provided I have a valid uh, proposition that will make things happen. Of course, if I don't have anything good, def definitely that person will not take me there. So that's just the way it works. So Joshua had a mentor. And his mentor was, was Moses. Of course, Moses, God, God said in, uh, in Deuteronomy 34, verse, uh, I think verse 10. He said, and there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. What it meant that it was, is that God never had that one-on-one, -on -one, face to face with any other prophet as at this time. And this was Joshua that wanted to step into that shoe of Moses. That was a big shoe. So how can you imagine he will excel just the way Moses excelled? How Moses brought the Israelites out of Egypt. How he performed miracles. The miracle of the, of the Red Sea. The Kadesh Barnea miracle. So many things that happened during the life of Moses. But as at this time, Joshua was filled with the wisdom of God. Because he had been with Moses. And Moses had laid hands upon him. And Joshua was, as, was afraid. He was afraid for how am I going to lead these people? The Israelites, of course, they, they were very, they were very, how would I put it? These are, they were very unpredictable people. You know, for Moses' time, he did, he did a lot. But instead, they still had so many bad um, um, speech with Moses. But Joshua was a bit worried. And God himself spoke to Joshua in Joshua 1 to 7. If you look at Joshua 1 to 7, God was speaking to Joshua. He said, Moses is dead. To reconfirm that Moses is actually, was actually dead. He said, and now I will tell you to go over to Jordan. 
a land that had been given unto the children of Israel. I will also make sure that the place that your foot will step upon, they shall be for you and for your inheritance. It said, everywhere the sole of your feet shall step upon. Shall step upon. It said, I have given, given it unto you. He also said, the wilderness of Lebanon, the wilderness of Ephrates, Ethites, and um, Euphrates. He said, they have been given unto you. And he said one thing. He said, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. He also told him, he said, be strong and be of good courage. And he said lastly there, he said, do according to all that Moses, my servant, has commanded you. But this is where he delivered the word to him. He now went to Joshua 8.1.8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That is where Joshua started speaking authoritatively. He said, this book of the word of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Out of, the, out of thy mouth. Why did he say the mouth? Because he, 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 God underst understood that you have to digest the word inside of you. Then to get to a stage, you have to start meditating and start speaking. He said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. He said, thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. You will observe to do according that is written in it. For then you will have, you will make your way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Thou shalt have good success. The scripture says, out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living water. So it means whatever you have inside of you, is what will make a way for you in the day of adversity. The scripture says, if you if you're faint, if you fail in the day of your adversity, then your, your faith is weak. That if you fail, if you faint in the adversity, in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Praise the Lord. It is the word that you have in you that will sustain you in the day of adversity. No other thing will sustain you. And why did God choose uh, Joshua? Because Joshua was a man that had faith. If you have faith, then God will begin to speak to you. If you have faith, then God will begin to release certain things to you. That even the people around you will begin to wonder, is this not the dark boy that I know? Or is this not the post that I used to know in the university days? God will begin to speak so many things to you. And when God has been speaking to you, you you now have an understanding of what he has been saying. And, the, and before then, you now, you begin to speak. The scripture says, I, uh, he said, he said we, we speak. Let, let me get it out. He was saying something about, we, we are that uh, I speak, you also receive. We therefore speak. Praise the Lord. So Joshua was that man that God released the word unto. And in that, in that same vein, we also need to tap into that realm of how to begin to chew the word, how to begin to meditate upon the word, and how to begin to allow this word to come from our mouths. Praise the Lord. So what makes the word works? There are two things that made the world work. The world will work from your mouth. The world that you have in your mouth will work for you. And the world that you have in your heart will also work for you. Romans 10, 9 to 10. He said, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He said, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What you confess will save you. What you confess will make a way for you. What you confess will bring out the best around that situation for you. And this was, you know, one of the fathers of faith, Kenneth Hagin. He stood upon the word on Mark eleven twenty three. 23. He said he never understood the power of that uh, of that uh, scripture. It was bedridden for more than six months, 16 months to be precise. And he stood upon that word. And that word said, Verily I say unto you, 
that whatsoever you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. He said, whatever you say, 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 say is that word there. He said, and if you, don't, if you do not doubt in your heart, then you, shall be, then you believe those things which have been said shall come to pass. For he shall have whatever he says. Praise the Lord. Is it the woman of the issue of blood that we're going to talk about tonight? This morning. She suffered for 12 years. She had met many physicians, many doctors. I'm sure she has paid a lot for 12 years. She spent all that she had. And her condition grew worse. But what did she do? She said in her heart, and she spoke, and she said it out. He said, if I may but touch its clothes, its clothes I shall be whole. Can you see that action there? He said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And immediately he touched the garment of Jesus. The scripture says, the blood dried up. And Jesus knew something left him. So what are you saying? What have you been speaking about concerning that situation? Many a times here, it was even the word of God that brought us to this assembly. I remember when we were at the whole uh, auditorium. And the first day Pastor John came, the word he said, he said, the siege is over. And many of us were, were like, what do you mean by the siege is over? We've been here for years. The likes of Atta, the likes of Pastor Aditola, Pastor Fisher. I only met Atta then. And he said, the siege is broken. And that was one of his first de declaration on the first service he had, he had with the workers. He said, the siege is broken. And we started praying. We started speaking. That was the place that ShopRite is at the moment. So to a lot of people that, that are not aware, aware, we were there. So you can imagine if we had not spoken the word, we would still be there and looking for a, a, a place. So he spoke the word and we all received it as, a, as our leader. And a lot of things went into it. We started acting. We started speaking. Even when the money was not there. Because I remember then I was head of Usher. When we were gathering. So I saw the way monies were coming in. Some were coming in in trickles. Some were coming in as a bulk. But it was a challenge. But God saw us through. Because we kept praying. We kept speaking. And we kept addressing the issues as they arose. And God saw us through. Each, you know, each time I, 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 had, I had to look back, I said, it can only be God. And we are still not done yet because the plans we have for this place, we've not even started. And that's just the truth. We are not done yet. The world works. In my life, the world has worked so many times. Made a the world has worked so many times. I remember when I was in university about 23 years ago in my fourth year, or I think fourth year, and I was in the middle of should I give up this studentship and return home. It was a challenge. A lot of my friends left. I stood, and that was, the, and that was when I gave my life to Christ. Of course, I took it back. <laughs> and still rededicated and still rededicating over 23 years ago. And the way the word came was just from a very unassuming person. He said, you know what? He said, God can do this thing. And we're there drinking, having a bottle of beer and all that. We're drink he said, God can do it. Don't worry. God can. I was like, what do you mean God can do? Not me and you, they drink it. <laughs> what are you saying God can do? He was saying God can do it. And I, and I you know, I, I, I had to leave. I, have to, I had to leave a, 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 a very good apartment as a student. Because I couldn't go back to that apartment. I had to leave that place. And I was practically squatting. And the words that I held on to as a new believer was Zechariah 4, 7. We said, who are thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, said, thou shalt become plain. It was a mountain in front of me. It was a serious mountain. For every day 
I spent in the campus that, that period, it was as if I wasn't going to be myself the next day. I was just pushing things, pushing things, pushing things. And I held on to that word. If I last week or some, maybe last month, my doctor friend in uh, Texas, he called me, he said, can you remember? We're just catching up on old times. He said, can you remember? Those are our prayer meetings. There was this uh, scripture that you were, we were always saying. I said, I remember. I said, I remember, I remember. And I said, do you know, I won't lie to you. That was the only scripture I, I really understood so well in the Bible as at that time. He said, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt be complain. I held on to those words because I had an extra year in the university. So I held on to those words and those words kept pulling me through. Say, every mountain shall be complained. I won't lose the studentship. Where do I want to start from? Because the option then was, okay, go back home, and the next thing, let's, let's see how we can get into another school, or do, as at that time, I think SAT and all that, TOEFL were coming up, and we're just saying, okay, let's see what we can do. It was my own arrangement, not even my parents' arrangement. Of course, they would have killed me there. <laughs> but it was that word that I held on to that pulled me through. You know, the words that you speak at times can even work against you. I remember when we got married and we told ourselves, we're going to wait. There's no need to be in a hurry to make babies. We're going to wait. But of course, a baby came just within the honeymoon and we lost the baby. But thank God we lost the baby. What would have happened if the baby had come and we had to just manage the crisis all through the Maybe when the baby is, is, is getting old, as in is growing, you understand. So we lost it. And when we had a retrospect, we said, oh, we said some things to ourselves. And those things delayed us for, for about three years. So the words that you speak, they are powerful. The words that you speak, they carry life. The scripture says the spirit quickens because the flesh Profited nothing. The spirit quickened. The, the flesh profited nothing. Jesus was speaking. He just performed miracle. The fishes and the loaves of bread. And they all heads. And he left. As he was moving, people were following him. And as they were following him, he moved to the sea. And from the sea, he went to Capernaum. And when he was in Capernaum, he was now telling them, he said, I am the bread of life. He said, the one that Moses fed you with, Moses did not feed you, it was from God. And he started making them to understand that I am the bread of life. And the disciples that were there, they did not understand what he was saying. They said it was a, it was a very hard truth. Something very hard, they couldn't understand. And they started dusting their shoes. They started packing their shoes, one by one. Just the way they would say, in the football, um, in the football pal palace, one by one, they don't they go. <laughs> Especially if your team is losing. One by one, they don't they go. And they started leaving. And Jesus turned to the 12 that were remaining. Those were his own carcass people. He said, will you also leave? Will you also leave? And trust uh, Peter. It was the one that was bold enough. He said, to whom shall we go? He said, you have the words of eternal life. He was also in confirming what the scriptures have said concerning Jesus in John 1.1. 1, 1. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. He was confirmed. He said, you have the words of eternal life. Where, where do you think say we will go? How do we want? We did here. Confirm. We there here. Where do you want us to go? No one has the scripture said, No man having put his hand on the plow and looks back. You have already you are already there. I can't imagine myself doing other things. Even when I step out of the ranks, I know I have leaders, I have people that will tell me I'm stubborn, I know. But people will tell me, No, what you did was wrong. What is did open their car to. You need to readjust. And that is life. You keep readjusting till you become that better person. Praise the Lord. 
So it's the words that have been formed in you that will sustain you in the day of adversity. The words you speak will identify you. The words you speak will set boundaries around your life. The words you speak will affect your inner man. It will affect your spirit. If the words that you have been speaking has not affected your spirit, you have not started. No wonder I like being around some people. Even if they mean those words or they don't mean it, they just say the scriptures. They say it and you will have that confidence. One person in this church then was uh, Brother Halbert, who was quite close to us in protocol then. You will be with him. Of course, even if he's not, but he will just say one or two things. I will be like, hmm, this thing makes sense based on the scripture. And you, you will run with it. Whether he's doing another thing or he's conforming, that's what he has said something that you could hold at that moment. So what you speak, identify who you are. What you speak, set the boundaries around your life. And what you speak affects your spirit. It affects your inner man. If your inner man is dead, my brother, my sister, there's no how you can, there's no how you can just be strong. No wonder God was telling Joshua. He said, be strong and be of good courage. He knows he needs that man. He knows he needs him. He needs him. Be strong, be of good courage. Moses, who, who is your mentor, is dead. Now I want to start speaking to you. And that was how he released that word to him. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. He said, meditate upon it day and night. Day and night, keep speaking, keep meditating up, upon it. And before you know, things will begin to happen. Things will begin to happen. It is the words that have been spoken in this assembly that has made us to get the results that we have gotten thus far. If words have not been spoken, if prayers have not been met, have not been rendered to the atmosphere, then where would, where would, where, where would we be right now? Those words came timely. The words came from men of God. The words came from guest ministers. The words came from our pastors. The words came everywhere we turned to. Those words were speaking. And we held on to those words as a church. So what is it that you are holding on to? What are you speaking? What are you confessing? Are you fighting the good fight of faith? Are you fighting that good fight of faith that will ensure you have that crown? Are you confessing Every day, you need to confess things to yourself. It's one thing to say something, and it's another thing to say another thing. So you need to say something and be resolute about it. That this is where I stand. Whether the devil likes it or not, I am moving forward. Whether the devil likes it or not, I am coming out of this situation. Whether the devil likes it or not, I am triumphing. Because the word of God says, we said, I am more than conqueror. Yoruba said, I like interpreting in Yoruba because it sings to me. I encourage everyone to, if you, have, if you have a good control of your own language, say some of those things to yourself and begin to see how it will work. Begin to see how it will manifest in your life. Praise the Lord. I had a challenge last year. Beginning of the year was so good. Got promotion, got so many. Things were just coming as if I, I wasn't just um, laboring so hard for it. But towards the end of last year, I had a major challenge. And that challenge was as if, no, everything I have struggled for in my organization for over 14, 15 years was going to crash. And I could not attend all the meetings we had in church from that December 17. Even my friend's wedding, Lawrence, I, couldn't, I wasn't able to be there. I had one my brother coming, and I just got that call that you need to report to the office. And everything was as if it was crumbling. Where do we start from as an organization? But we kept, we held on to certain things. And I called so many people. And it was told that mercy will speak. The word I was just hearing was mercy. 
mercy, 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 mercy. That was just the word I was hearing. And after a while, I started speaking it to mercy. Let your mercy speak. Let, because to pray was even a challenge. I was just speaking the word. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. And I was just surprised. Last week, I got a commendation letter for saving the situation, for, our, for, for, for being able to be part of the team that were able to, you know, to arrest that situation and bring back the organization to normalcy. So it was a challenge. But we, we need to start speaking. We need to say things that will turn, our, that, that will turn around our situation for good. Things that will work positively for us. And the place you have to start from, if you are a family man, start with your children. Start speaking to their life. And that is where it starts from. If you are a married man and you, your wife is pregnant, start speaking to the womb. Start speaking to the womb. Whatever you want for that child, start speaking to, to that child. The name you want to give that child, start saying it in that womb. And you will see the manifestation. Praise the Lord. It has been God all through. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. Can we rise up? All my days I'll be carrying in your hands. From the no moment that I, I wake, wake up. up. Ha. Till I lay my head, I, I will say of, of the goodness of God all my life. All my life, you have been Stanza, I love your voice. Yes. Let's go. Say, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. Oh, you have led me through the fire. In that case, now. Someone in the house this morning that wants God's goodness to run after him. 
Do we have someone in the house this morning that wants to have a relationship with God? Do we have someone in this house this morning that wants to say, God, I want you to start speaking to me? Do we have someone in the house this morning that wants to rededicate his life to God? If we have someone in the house this morning, we don't need to call you out. We don't need to cajole you. Just come forward and let's just have a word of prayer. Come forward and let's have a word of prayer. For that person that wants a life transforming life. For that person that wants transformation to happen in his life. Just come forward this morning and the ministers of God will pray for you. Come forward, the ministers of God will pray for you. The goodness is running after me. Your goodness is running after me. Oh my Lord, you have been faithful. Thank God you made it. Thank God you made it. All right. Well, I'm sure you listened to the message. You, you heard the demonstration. Everything had gone well. But that's not the end of it all. You will now need to sit down with what you have heard and begin to put it to practice. Now, because that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Don't let it go to a waste. Just sit down, settle down with the word and let the word become a reality in your life. This is how you will enjoy the fruitfulness of what God has already planted in you. And I'd like you to be a part of what the Lord is doing in this house. Join us same time next week. And I want to believe that God will do what he has proposed to do in your life in the mighty name of Jesus.